to a virtual walkthrough of a Danish supermarket called Irma. Uh, Irma is primarily based in certain parts of Schellen, which is one of the main islands of Denmark, but it's a quite high quality supermarket. We're going to spend 15 minutes walking through and taking a little look. So we came into the doors and you can see that there's a really nice design style that Irma has here. They've got some fresh food primarily on display for people who want ready meals or perhaps they want some kind of uh, quick sandwich. Some of these supermarkets also have like bakeries. Um, they don't necessarily bake the things on site but they get them freshly delivered every day, including the famous cinnamon buns. Uh, you saw there there was a little cafe machine as well right next to the entrance and people who are i think members of the club get a coffee for free or it's relatively cheap this particular store um, is an award-winning store as you can see there on the sign if you read danish and if you don't it says the year's boutique <laughs> so that means the, the the shop of the year for for irma um, uh, irma will actually close down in a few months entirely. It's part of a, a cooperative which is a large group of stores and brands across the Nordics, I think across the world. Um, they pride themselves on quality and you can see a lot of the fresh produce here uh, and I know I'm going around it fairly fast but a lot of the fresh produce is of a very high quality. It's all organic. The people who work there pride themselves on making sure the displays are good. I think even the people behind the scenes in the head office make sure the design is really nice as well. Um, the prices um, are quite high, uh, relatively speaking, to the rest of the world. I'll put on screen here what the conversion rate is from uh, 100 Kronos, Danish kroner to a dollar. Um, but the quality is good. Uh, I got a shock the first time I moved to Denmark uh, with the price, but then I could understand that the quality of, of the goods, especially in this store, Irma, is of a very high quality indeed. There's some fun stuff. I, I mean, I go over here and I, I pick out uh, mackerel salad, which is mackerel salad. Uh, not much salad to it, but it's a topping for smørbrød. You know, the open top sandwiches that are quite famous in Denmark. Um, so it's, I think it's tomato, mackerel, and uh, some sort of creamy thing on top. <laughs> I have not had the joy of trying that. But there are some fun things. A lot of focus on fish, of course. Um, you know, it's you've got uh, part of the Danish uh, landscape, of course, is, is coastal, and then you've got Green, Greenland as well. So a lot of the Danes like like good quality fish on their open top sandwiches, their smoke bowl. The meat, pretty, pretty much I think most of this would be organic in Irma. Um, Prices would be fairly fairly high. We're talking about maybe uh, at least fifty kroner for let's say five hundred grams of mincemeat. They love their sausages. They love their bacon. There's a, a big market um, export market for bacon in Denmark. Um, so there'll be aisles and aisles of this. It's relatively sort of small. This this shop. Um, and also relatively quiet. I went in quite early on the day, so I wouldn't disturb too many people. Um, but there is a butcher there that you saw, um, and they come and visit and cut up nice quality uh, cooked meats as well as fresh meat as well. Uh, the Danes love their cheese. There's some international cheeses there. There's a lot of local cheeses um, that are made in Denmark. Um, it's, again, a dairy nation, so you know, eggs, milk, butter. Butter is a large uh, export uh, from Denmark, and for those of you who, who who eat butter, you'll know that Lurpak, a Danish brand, is fairly well known throughout the world, actually, if not in Europe. Now, going a bit of a, a detour here, we look at some of the frozen foods. You'll probably notice there's a distinct lack of like ready meals in Denmark. There's a, it was one of the first things that I noticed. People, are, I think, are still getting accustomed to that. More focus on making simple foods. Um, but of course, Denmark has a very high uh, density of Michelin-starred restaurants and shops, 
uh, supermarkets like Irma try and serve those needs with, with producing high quality ready meals and high quality ingredients. But there's far fewer ready meals than you'd find in perhaps, let's say, a British supermarket chain like Marks and Spencer. Although the quality and the type of store is probably equivalent to Marks and Spencer. You can see here they have their own brands. Um, that, that is a co-op brand that's now starting to seep into the stores as they change. Um, but they have their own brand stuff. They have uh, you know, well-known brands such as Kellogg's, as you saw there, as well as a lot of local Danish brands as well. But in this kind of breakfast aisle, you can see those Kellogg's, there was the co-op. Lots of um, Knekbol, which is like, a, I would say like bread biscuits, um, savoury biscuits, savoury breads that you can get there. They're very popular in all of Scandinavia uh, and there's of course a spot dedicated to it. Bread. Uh, <laughs> I'll go over here quite quickly. But, um, you know, um, the rye bread is a staple. It's a staple diet for people in Denmark. You'll have it in your lunchbox. Probably wouldn't have it for breakfast. You'd have you'd go to the baker, and you'd pick up some fresh bread rolls. Um, but here you can see this is an organic uh, rye bread um, made by a well-known brand, um, and you can see some of the, their own brands there. But it's very much of the rye bread. You do get some sourdough breads that are made in mass-produced quantities, but you go to the bakery to get your your morning rolls and bread. You know, I'm picking up some juice there just to make it look like I'm not, I'm not just filming. Um, but you know, you've got your fresh juices, you've got a whole range of different dairy products. And then Irma specifically, they focus on working with local kind of producers. Um, and this one here, I, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Teaser. I love the packaging. You know, the, the colour, the typography, the, the quality of of that that milk <laughs> is exceptional you do pay for it but when it's something so uh, so frequently consumed in our household I like to spend a little bit a little bit more you're probably looking at about 15 kroner for that maybe to 16 kroner uh, I know I didn't spend too much time looking at the, the label there just to give you an indication as to to what we're talking about in terms of the cost you can buy uh, alcohol in supermarkets, unlike other Nordic countries where you have to go to the state monopoly. Denmark is a brewing nation. They don't make so much wine, um, but they do enjoy a glass or two. And you'll find that actually the quality of what they import is very high. It's very cheap. You know, you could get a bottle of fairly good quality wine for 50 kroner, whereas in other countries it might cost at least 70, 80 or 90 kroner. The equivalent would be seven pound, eight pound, something like that in the UK. Um, there's a, a frozen, uh, sorry, a cold chiller cabinet there full of white wine, rosé, and sparklings. Um, and there was a locked cabinet back there as well uh, for the more expensive champagnes. That's because this is quite a heavily, I think, quite a heavily trafficked uh, store at a train station. Um, so to keep things safe and secure, they'll have that locked cabinet. There's some uh, some more alcohol at the, the actual checkout itself, or the cashier, um, but there were some some Aquavit that you could, you could buy. Uh, you've got a couple of aisles of dried goods here, you know, what's that? That's 16 kroner for some, uh, for some rice that you can turn into uh, a food. Um, which is is something that uh, is called maybe lisenguil, which is rice porridge. Um, and then there's some fun stuff like they've got like remowil, which is a very unique Danish, perhaps Nordic um, topping for sandwiches. You know all your usual condiments there that you'd find in other countries. But I think remowil was something I, I chose to look at because it's quite uh, specific and unique to to Denmark. Yeah, we're going down the tea and coffee aisle. Um, I said this this chain of stores will actually be closing down, and, and some of them will be changing into uh, just a general kind of kind of co-op brand. So a lot of these things we're looking at may not last that long. And one of the most famous and iconic 
brands that they have um, is their coffee, and it's the blue coffee, Irma Bloca. Um, some of these will survive, but if you ask any Dane what Irma is well known for, it will be their coffee. And it is incredibly high quality um, coffee. That one isn't organic, but there is an organic version of it, the green one that you can see. And these are kind of like really beautifully designed packaging, I, ha I hasten to add. Great advertising. You know, there's neon signs, which I'll maybe do a tour of the, the lakes in Copenhagen. And you can see that the, 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 those neon signs have these iconic brands on there. So for a lot of people, this kind of store will be will be really well missed. If I can, I'll do maybe a slightly longer walkthrough uh, where we can look at some of the prices and the specifics uh, um, more in detail. But, um, you know, we've got some of the daily household goods there. We had some washing up liquid, some soaps and some toilet paper, and kitchen roll. Um, <laughs> I stop and look at these because these are what I would call kinesco, and maybe that's inappropriate. I don't know um, where it lands, but these are house shoes. Um, there's, uh, they're very incredibly iconic. I think every Dane has a pair. But you take your outdoor shoes off at the door, and you'll immediately pull, put a pair of of um, kinesco Chinese shoes on. Um, also called Maosco after Chairman Mao. I think again, probably does not. Uh, stand the test of time. Uh, I've I've learned it from people that I've I've known in Denmark, and that's that's what I call it now. But I can't agree and say that it's it's a good or a, a bad thing. I just don't know. But let me know in the comments if there's a better name for these 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 things in Danish or uh, or in your native language. High quality products don't just end at, uh, at obviously uh, fresh uh, goods. They've got a really good range and had, I must say in past tense, had a really good range of own brand toiletries as well, which I think some of which will survive the, the shift to the co-op. That soap I picked up there was a shower gel and it was 70 kroner versus the other one I ended up going for, which was 38. Um, so you can see there's a, a real range of qualities. You know, what I love about this store is the attention to the brand, the detail, the signage, um, the lighting, the range of products, everything about it, the customer service is is incredibly important, uh, I think, to the customers of this store and, and actually to myself as well. I'm a, I'm a designer, so I appreciate interesting things, good packaging, um, and I think that's what will be missed uh, when, when Irma um, mutates into kind of a more generic co-op, cooperative brand. And we'll see. I think this store will 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 be going for another couple of months. Maybe I can come back and do a slightly more in depth tour. So there are some things missing on the shelves here. I think as they're trying to maybe run down some of their own brand stuff. Here we've got some uh, beers in the fridge. Um, you know these are four, maybe four or five percent uh, lagers. Uh, we have some alcohol free options. We have some slightly higher uh, quality. Um, brands and some more well-known brands like Tuborg and, and Carlsberg there. There's a lot of local breweries um, that are well-known in Denmark for producing high-quality craft beer. Perhaps you've heard of Mikeler. I'll leave some of the links in the description as well so you can go take some research, look at some research and, 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 and find out a little bit more about them. But I, I drink a beer every now and again and, and I think some of them are just absolutely delicious. I think some of them are pushing the boundaries of what I like, but I can appreciate that there are these kind of companies locally producing here, and that fridge was, was kind of canned cocktails, and there was, was what we were looking at was um, a local kind of ale number, number, size, ale number 16, which is, you know, kind of reflective of the desire for, for good quality craft beer that this country has. Um, we saw a little bit of the the more higher qual quantity percentage um, alcohol there at the, the counter and I, I, like around the world the Danes love their candy specifically their licorice which we're looking at here uh, I think that little bag is maybe around 10 kroner, 12 kroner, something like that um, but yeah 
this is the end of the tour. I'm sorry it was so fast. It's my first one. I'll do more in the future, but thank you very much.